So to create the roundabout, we're going to go up to the network strings pull down and click on roundabout. In the command line, it will say select roundabout alignment must exist. So if we have a roundabout already created, or if we're going to create a new roundabout, you always left click close to the center or inner alignment as we're going to do now. This form is not modeless, so if we need to pan the drawing to one side, we'll need to just use the little pan icon or zoom icon that's found at the bottom of the form. We're just going to move that to one side, press enter or escape, and we can now begin to look at the form. So first of all, the center alignment has already been populated for us. Because we left clicked on the inner alignment, it's already found that. Now, the outer alignment can be picked from a list or can be picked from the drawing. You'll notice that when we go to the list, only one alignment is available. This is because Civil Site Design will look for alignments that are closed and not already in use. And there is only one other alignment in the drawing that is closed, which happens to be the outer alignment. So we can go ahead and left click on that. We're then going to choose the template by clicking on the template pull down. Curb mountable R for right. The section spacing of one, again, is a pretty reasonable value. If you've got very small inner radius values, then one is probably perfectly acceptable. For the software to create the roundabout, it needs to see all of the different elements of this particular insection. The elements are two road strings, which is existing road, and then existing side road. There are road strings, and we also have two curb returns, one over here and one over here. We can manually go and pick them from the drawing or we can click on set up elements automatically. So we're going to go ahead and pick on that. And the software will find all of those associated elements within the intersection for us. If you find that something is not within that list, then you can go ahead and click on add string or add curb. All we're now going to do is to click on create intersection model. You'll see in the drawing that a new surface has been created and we're going to have a quick look at that shortly. Just a further note about this form, if you need to remove the roundabout and any associated surfaces that the roundabout creates as part of the process, you need to come back to the roundabout tool, select the inner island, and then you can use the delete roundabout option and that will restore total model back to its original state with the intersection. We're going to click on OK. Just before we review Model Viewer, we're going to just have a quick look at some surfaces that have been created just for your information. So we're going to go up to Toggle Display on the Roads tab. In the form, you will see that we have a couple of surfaces that have been created. Now, these surfaces are created as part of the design process and the draping of these two particular strings that have just been created within the roundabout creation. You do not need to necessarily see them because Total Model has also been updated. So we're going to uncheck the contours for this particular surface so we don't see them anymore and click OK. Now, for whatever reason, you may find that the Total Model contours are actually sitting behind the image. If that is the case, you can always try RE in your command line and press Enter um, to refresh the screen and you should see that those contours have come back into the drawing environment. We're now going to have a quick look at the surface that's been created in Model Viewer. So go up to the Roads tab and click on Model Viewer. Just going to zoom in to the area where the roundabout is and you can see how the software has created the roundabout. So this curb has been draped onto Total Model and then the LDUM code that was assigned to that particular template has then been draped onto the outer edge. With that, a surface has been created and total model has been trimmed out. This is how the roundabout module operates. So you can see there how we've got this really nice tidy annulus being created. Now, if you want to see this in more detail, we can do a couple of things. Model viewer has some right click options. So what we might do is open up a cross section view of this particular um, roundabout. So I'm going to hover my mouse near the inner island, right click, and then click on display cross section. This is a cross-section of our roundabout. So you can see the green line in the background is the sampled surface. Now, because we've created a roundabout and because it's using Total Model, Total Model is the sampled surface. So this is what the green line is in the background. So if that surface changes, the roundabout will update. You can see how also the software has draped the outer alignment onto the Total Model surface. 
what we might also do is just have a quick look at the vertical geometry. So let's just click on the vertical grading editor button directly from the cross section window. You can see total model is the sampled surface in the background and then the software has then draped IPs directly onto that surface and this is entirely editable. You are able to go in and manually adjust all of the levels of the inner island and the outer island. I'm going to close that down. Let's just close model viewer down. If at any point we need to make changes to say the template that's being applied or we want to rename the alignments, then we use the suite of tools that we found earlier, which is the rename tool and the design data form. Okay, so if we need to make changes to different elements, we use the same tools that we've used for all of the other network strings.